to the Citywide Institute. This is Christian Education. I hope everyone is in the right class. And uh, we're going to get started in just a minute. Make sure that everybody gets here. Good evening, my friend. How are you? Good. All right. Okay, if you'll just take one and kind of pass it back. We're going to be talking just a little about this tonight, and we're going to get started in it in earnest on tomorrow. Let's see if that will take one and pass one back, man. Okay. All right. Chair back in the back, Brother Barty, and uh, we're about running out of chairs, which is good. Good sign. Amen. Amen. In fact, you might want to run up to him. Got some more chairs. Okay. All right. Our lesson will be covering the Christian education. What we're going to learn about Christian education is it's the most neglected area in the church. And we know that we read our Bibles, and we do pick up our Bibles, and we do carry our Bibles. All right, First Lady, give her, the, give her a chair, Brother. Lord Jesus, Amen. So we're going to be learning about the Bible. I think before we can really appreciate the, the do's and don'ts of education, and we have to be ready with the right spirit. Amen? Amen? And so I thought tonight we would start just asking God to give us the right spirit in which to study his word. It's a profound word. And so we got to introduce the product. The product is the word of God. Amen. The infallible, inerrant word of God. Now all the education modalities won't help you if you don't have the right spirit. Amen. 
because the devil knows scriptures and can quote them probably better than we do. But his heart is not repentant, his heart is rebellious, and his heart is darkened. So our heart has to be right. And then one of the things I thought I had tested on my radio broadcast, and I thought I would test now. And this is a test. All who have Bibles, get your Bibles ready. Here's a chip. You can kind of share that with us. All right. You got an excellent? Thank you, ma'am. Here's another chair over here. Thank you. All right. The Texas legislature has introduced, someone has introduced the bill. This is your first test. This is your first challenge. I'm challenging you right off the bat. I'm on, this is the pro football. Is this pro football? Not pro football. This is Super Bowl. All right. Super Bowl. We ready? You ready for this one? All right. Here we go. Texas legislature, someone has introduced a bill to place the... All right, okay, has to place the, we'll have to get you a copy in a minute, and we've already ex uh, exceeded, and that's good. Has introduced a bill to place the Ten Commandments in schools. Uh, it may not have a good chance of uh, passing because it may be obviously against the First Amendment and looking at uh, respecting a church, reflecting a state and religion, and there can be no state religion, so that would look like some of the Supreme Court cases would say, no, that can't be done. But it's a good try. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I wish it would go through. I it hasn't so. been seen yet, but it will do, and we don't know what the Supreme Court ultimately would say. But somebody had the bright idea to say, we need to put the Ten Commandments back in school. Amen. Because we need a moral basis for our children. Amen. And so I would agree with that 100%. Here's your challenge. Here's your challenge in the next minute or so. If someone were to come to you and say, that's this bill that's going to be passed, and when it's passed, we want to put the Ten Commandments in the schools. We want to put them in public buildings. We want the children to read them. Can you, as a 30-year Christian, find the Ten Commandments in your Bible inside of 20 seconds? Go. And don't holler it out. Just raise your hand. And don't look on anybody's paper. Can you find the Ten Commandments? All right. All right. All right. All right, did I say 20 seconds? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Stand up and tell us where you got your Ten Commandments next, sweetheart. My dear. I got so much. It's found in Exodus chapter 20. All right. All right, give her a hand. All right. You see, I gave this out on the radio the other day, and I was, we must have 10,000, 20,000 listeners. I couldn't get 10 people, 10 people to come and tell me where the Ten Commandments were found, okay? All right, we're just going to give you this chair here, and somewhere along the line, you can, you can help yourself. All right. So my point is, people go to church for many times, a long time, and we carry our Bible, and we look very nice carrying our Bible. In fact, that Bible gets more writing sometimes than the grandchildren, because we take the Bible with us, and we then bring it back home, but we never pause to open it and to read its profound truths. Amen. So tonight you should know that the Ten Commandments are found in two places in your Bible. First in Exodus 20 and second in Deuteronomy chapter 5. All right, put that, write that down. I may ask you a test question. I may challenge you at the end of the course to see how many remember it, test your short and long-term memory. All right, you need to know because why do we need to know? Because our children have no moral compass. I'm telling you, it's still good. They're still ethical, they're still moral, and they're good. And you find out really whether or not you are studying your Bible when you know what the Lord says. I shall have no other God but before me. Okay? All right, we're going to have to find some chairs, Brother Marti, and see if we can get some folks to give us some chairs. Give her your chair, and then we'll see if we can get some chairs. Amen? That's always a good sign. Yes, it is. Let's get one over here, Thank you very yeah. much. So, we know we need to have a moral basis. Children are going in schools killing up other children. That's right. They're killing their parents. There's more suicide. We need education. But what we're stuck on is emotional, and what we're stuck on is having church rather than becoming the church. Amen. You know, we ought to become the equity of the call. We are the call down assembly. It's more than a building. So tonight, 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 we're going to introduce the Bible. And you say, I already know the Bible. No, 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 no. All right, you 
commandment that you find the Ten Commandments, all right. <laughs> so we, we want to challenge your knowledge now, and that's a good thing. So we're going to get started. Father, we just want to thank you now as we look and learn that you open our heart. In yes. Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now one of the things you've noticed as you walk inside the room is we've supersized the Bible. We've supersized the Bible. Now why on earth I miss what you supersize the Bible? Because the Bible you have is, is a reflection sometimes of our own faith. It's small, the print is 12 point font, and we open it and there are new pictures in it. And we don't get the message that the Word of God, infallible, inerrant, life changing. We don't get the message that this Word is big enough to take us in and wash us and change us and make us brand new again. And so we supersize the Bible to let you know this is the product you're going to be learning. This is the thing you want to be teaching. This is what you want to instill into your children and grandchildren and to your local church. They need to know the infallible, inerrant Word of God. So we want to kind of introduce this. This is the Bible, the greatest book ever written. Amen? Amen? It is the greatest book ever written, and it is the best-selling book of all time. Amen. How do you know that? Because yes. the Bible has sold since John Wycliffe interpreted in 1400. It has sold over 6 billion copies. It is the best-selling of all time books. Amen? Amen? But that's not what makes it great. What makes it great is it has the Word of God. Amen. And the Word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our hand. The Word of God is infallible and errant and is the dunamis. We say the word dunamis, we get our the word dynamite from. It has self-existing power. And that is what you ought to be excited about. The Bible has the best story, the best plot, the best characters you will ever see in any radio movie or any screenplay. The Bible is the best book. It detects us from the fact that the Lord God expelled man from the Garden of Eden after he sinned. And he chased him out with a flaming angel with a flaming sword. And man had to eke out his living. So it is a story about man's departure from God, but a father's tender love for his children. And how he searched for that love and sought that love. And man went through several dispensations. The dispensation of innocence, the dispensation of conscience, the dispensation of human government and promise and law, and failed in every test until the Lord Jesus came with grace. Yes. Yes. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that is and not of yourself. yourself. It is the gift of God. Yes, so. The Bible is the greatest book yes. because it is the profound story of God. Yes, and we miss so much yes. because we do not take time in the morning yes. to read yes. our Bible. Yes. We do not take quiet time to read our Bible. We do not take time in the evening to reflect on the day and how God has blessed us. Right. So much of what we do is in a hurry. Yeah. But I want to talk about that word because that word that God had says in the beginning was the word. Yes, sir. And the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning. Yes, sir. God. And without him was not anything made that was made. What product you are really bringing? I'm gonna open this door because the air is gonna come through. Yeah, good. Thank you. Uh, do you know the product you're selling and presenting? Do you know if this was IBM or one of the Fortune 500 companies, you'd be making? Let's give you a good salary, four hundred thousand a year with commission. Would you take that job? <laughs> let's give you four hundred thousand with commission. Would you listen then? Why yes. do we always perk up when it's money, but when it's the Lord, we lean yes. down. Come on, come on. You're talking about some money, so come on, bring it. Yes. God wants you to learn and take his word seriously. Yes. His word is the most exciting thing. I think the shows that are coming on there got everybody excited. Um, the, movie, the TV show, Empire. Huh? Somebody knew about that. Yeah. 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 I got to see the Empire. This is better than the Empire. Amen. This is better than it any is. show and any it movie is. that has ever come on. Yeah. Best cast of characters. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Then the 
protagonist and antagonist, rather, Satan, Lucifer, mm -hmm. a fallen angel who's trying to get everything that God's established and destroy it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And this is a word that we need. The power of God gives us the energy and the kononia, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. to do anything. Amen. I can do all things through yes, Christ. We can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, sir. We've got to understand that. So we've got to get excited. Amen. We've got to get a sense of urgency. Yes, yes. Church, I tell you, the people are going to hell and not even worried about it. Yes, we are our way to Lupe's and we are our way to buffets in the morning, buffets in the noon day, and buffets at night. Too many buffets and not enough study. But the Lord says, study to show myself a yes, a workman that needed not, not be ashamed, yeah. but right, right. divine right. 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 the word You've got to know that you know that you know. I'm fascinated when I read about the power of God. I like what James Weldon Johnson said, because he said, and God stepped out on space. Yeah. And it yeah. was blacker than a hundred midnights yeah. down in a cypress swamp. And God smiled. And the light broke. Yeah. And the light rolled darkness yeah. all up on one side, and the light still shining on the other. And God said, That's good. What word was that that God spoke when He said, Let there be? How did He hang the earth in the atmosphere and nothing is holding it? How did he make it the third planet from the sun and then build the world on three? Took time and made it past, present, and future. Took ice and water and made it a liquid gas and solid. How did he make men, women, and children? How did he do that? Because he's God the triune, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And he took this world and hung it and took that sun and hung it in space. Hallelujah. 600 times larger than all the planets combined. And then he set that world, like I said, the third. He made us just right. We're just far enough from the sun yes. not, to, not to cool off and just close enough not to burn up. And every day, every day we go through see, every seasons of the year, we go through those seasons and God is keeping us. Amen. Who's doing that? How can he make a world that would go, if you will, and spin at a thousand forty miles an hour. That's what we do. He spin it like a spin ball on a, on a baseball. He spin it at a thousand forty miles an hour. We are rotating. Then he put that baby in an orbital path around the sun at sixty-seven thousand miles an hour. And you know what? We walk outside, mm -hmm. feel like we're standing still. Yeah. 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 How great yeah. 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 is our God? Yeah. 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 you got to get excited yeah. 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 over what God has done. Yeah. Yeah. And if you really think about what he's done, he's brought us yeah. 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 from a mighty long way. Yeah. 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 Stony the road we trod, yeah. bit of the chastening rod, yeah. felt in the day when hope unborn had died. Yet with a steady beat, have not our weary feet yeah. come to the place yes, sir. for which our fathers yeah. sat. Come over on chains, fettered, yeah. yeah. put into the hull of a ship, whipped and beaten, and all our kinfolk with us, and some died. You could always tell a slave ship because you could see the sharks falling. Because every time somebody died, they threw the dead body. When you came over, God saw that your, your, your progeny and your ancestors made it. When you came over, they were the strongest and they survived. You are from good stock. You didn't come from weak folk. You came from strong folk. Hold your head up high. Walk, walk together, children, because we're going to get that again. Amen. Amen. Our children are going, it seems, to the dogs. Our education system is flawed. We've got to work together as a community of believers to instill, whether they took prayer out of the school or not, they didn't take prayer out of my heart. They didn't take prayer out of me. Anytime I feel like it, I can call on the name of Jesus. There's power in the name. That word that took the world and held it yeah. is the same word yeah. that can transform the our lives. Yeah. You are, if you will, practitioners of the word. Yeah. You are witnesses of the word. Yes, we are. Your yeah. mouth and your heart and the Holy Spirit can get together and keep somebody out of a burning hell. Yes, 
You haven't given yourself credit enough. The devil has diminished what you have. He's given us comfort and he's given us convenience and he's given us cell phones. And we don't want to talk to people anymore. We don't want to talk to virtual people. Talk about it. God has given you something he's going to hold you accountable. Yeah. I had a vision, I think a couple of, about a year or two ago, of one of the prominent preachers here in the city who was dead. I've mean, shared this with the minister, so I don't mind what you, what you think about it. But the preacher came back to me and said, Reverend Benson, go back and tell your brothers in the union, y'all spending so much time on building buildings. You're not building people. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <coughs> I promise saying that. Yeah. Buildings are good and we should build them. Yeah. But our priority should never leave. Yeah. Say that, sir. Building Say it. Say it. people. Amen. Say it. Amen. And the problem with Christian education is the first thing in the budget to be cut. Yeah. The problem with Christian yeah. education, we let anybody teach anything. Yeah. anything. The problem with Christian education yeah. is what you think the scriptures say. say. The scriptures yeah. can speak for themselves. Yeah. They don't need no yeah. interpretation. Yeah. You've got to exegete the scripture yeah. and let the Bible yeah. speak for the Bible. Yeah. But we have become so lethargic, we put anybody up to teach who's yeah. a warm body. Yeah. We don't know what they believe, we don't know what they think, we don't know what they've been baptized, born again. If they there, you teach. Yeah. We got to do a better job yes, in regarding the Word of God. Amen. We've got to do a better job reflecting on what God has taught us and being able to get qualified teachers, quality teachers, that will spend time in study. Yeah. Christian education is most neglected part. You can have a huge church that's set out of a a thousand people, maybe 300 will enroll for Bible study. Maybe. Uh, maybe. And then out of the 300, maybe 30 will study their Bible. Maybe. And maybe half of them will show up for Bible study. Maybe. And as yes, the old preachers say, if you wanted to hit somebody with a brick on Bible study night, the brick would have to be thrown and zigzagged. Because <laughs> we are scattered. We don't believe in education. After we get saved, we just say, let the preacher teach the Bible. You got some real profound things you need to know when you start studying the Word of God. When you study the Word of God, you will study it by reading it. You will study it by memorizing it. You will study it by repetition. Because repetition is what gives you the recall factor for the mind. Now this is a good time to tell us, that remind us, God compared us to sheep. Have you ever watched sheep before? Sheep are directionless. They don't, they, they can wander off, be eating over here, and wander off, and you will let it go somewhere else. That's right. Sheep are defenseless. They don't even have any strong teeth or anything like that. They don't bite anybody. You never seen a sign that says, beware of sheep. Huh? <laughs> beware of dog, but beware of sheep. <laughs> Lamb chop. So you got to understand, God has compared us to sheep for a reason. Because they have very little memory. They have very little direction. And the thing they really need is a shepherd. That's when they it. hear the shepherd's voice, That's they, right. they will obey. Yes, and another they will not follow. Yes, so God wants you to understand our mind is like sheep. We have to read it over. We have to hear the voice of God. And when you hear the voice of God, you hear the, God, the voice of God in your quiet time. That's right. You need quiet time in the morning. Amen. My, my great grandmama, uh, she kept me when my mom and uh, dad went to work. And I can remember the great grandma, they didn't have air conditioning. Somebody remember that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they take a window, raise that baby, yeah. and put a stick in it. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody remember that? Yeah. Yeah. I remember you. Yeah. Yeah. Grandma would yeah. sit down with her coffee and read the word. Yeah. Yeah. And she was my great grandma, she taught herself how to read. Yeah. And then she gave me my first Bible verse. Yeah. Uh, and first it was Jesus, well, then it was, uh, then it was I hate vain thought, but the law I do love. And I would, my mama would say, every time you sit at this table, boy, you bless your food. Yeah. You bless your food. I got to be a little older, and grandma would start on her food without blessing. I said, grandma, make your food. That food get almost ever. I was a, a naughty little kid. But the whole idea is, you learn scripture because your household valued them. Yeah. 
The people in yeah. your house yes. taught you the word. Yes. Yes. And what's happening is our, our households are not teaching the word. Yes. And they don't yes. know the word to teach yes. the word. Yes. So we've got to impress upon them the importance of studying that word. Yes. Yes. And there is a God behind those scriptures yes. that puts everything together. He's a God that called out the world by his word. Yeah. And he said, let that be, let that be, yeah. let that be. Ten let that be. And they all answered with, and it was so, and it was so, and it was so. Yeah. Yeah. That's the dunamis. That's power inherent within the word. Yeah. And we're going to show you a little tape later tonight where words do matter. Mm. When you talk about sticks and stones, bring my bones, yeah, words yeah. don't, yes, words will make you fight. Yeah. Words will bring you to tears. Yeah. And when you were five years old, words will make you throw rocks with you. Yeah. Get you. <laughs> words are powerful things. And just think, if God created the universe with his words, that's a powerful thing. Yes, sir. And we need to study that word because every word that the Lord Jesus told in Satan, that you do not live by bread alone, That's right. but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And that word will be good for living. God can wake you up in the middle of the night and solve a problem. Amen. Have you done it for you? Yes, sir. It's a problem solved. Yes, I'm telling you, you can be worried, twisted, and anxiety and almost turn into knots. And God wake you up and give you an answer to it. Bless your soul. And then you can go to sleep there. Because you say it's already in his hands. So that word is powerful. And we have to transmit the value and the essence of what God has done for us. You are a witness, whether you like it or not. Are. You are on the stand, yes. and the stand is your life. Yes. I go into court, when I go into court, I swear, when it's in, I tell the whole truth, my butt juice, I'll take the seat and tell us who you are. That's and they start with, now what happened on the day in question? Mm -hmm. And they got to tell me. And the better witness is the one who's already convinced they are telling the truth. Yes, but one who's lying, one who's uh, trying to hide, got to think, oh, and you can always tell by their demeanor. Grandmama can tell. When you're like, Grandmama get in your face and poke you. They don't be lying anymore. Grandmama was the judge, jury, and executioner. Yes, she was. So they can tell when you're telling the truth. Young people want to know without asking. What has God done for you? Mm. He's supposed to be so good. What yeah. has he done for you? That's right. In the movie, I think uh, they made, uh, was it uh, with Forrest uh, Whitaker? Yeah. Butler, when he was a yeah. butler at the White House. Yeah. Yeah. The conflict between his young son and him. Yeah. His son saying, oh, daddy, you just Uncle Tom. Yeah. Over there, but doing all that work, uh, been down work. And mama said, you better leave him alone. That's right. Because without his work, you wouldn't have him. Right. Without him learning how to be a good brother, you wouldn't be nothing. Right. 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 So the young people always want to start with what you got. Yeah. You ought to tell them where you've been. Yeah. Where you've been. Thank you. Tell them where you've been. Thank you. I've been through the storm. Yeah. I'm still standing. Yeah. Yeah. You ought to see the rest of it. Yeah. We made it over. Amen. And God has blessed us. Yes, and that sense of urgency, that sense of pride, yes. that sense of dignity yes. has to transmit when you're talking with somebody. It can't be uh, just the wages of sin is dead for the guy that you turn around. You have to part. If you don't sleep, you're going to hell. Yes. And yes. hell yes. is real. Yes. 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 And there are some people who've had astral projections, out of body experiences, who went down mm -hmm. instead of up. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, Robert Weiss tells us in the 23 seconds or 23 minutes in hell, mm -hmm. he tells us in the best spelling uh, author in the New York Times, says he did definitely went to hell. Mm -hmm. So 13 high, feet high demons that look like reptiles. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> this is true. Mm -hmm. Hades, and it's called hell. Mm -hmm. Hades, Tataru, Gehenna. It's the place of the living dead. Yeah. And you're yeah. living, but you wish you were dead. Yeah. 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 And he said, in this, he said, oh, it was a jail cell. And there were these two 13 feet high reptile looking creatures. I said, why are they looking like reptile? Because they're dead. It's the devil. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And he said, when I was in there, they kept throwing me against the wall. And my body began to fall apart. It was like I was breaking, but yet I, I had no, no earthly body. And he said, I felt the pain and I yeah. felt the stench in the yeah. nostrils. It was like sulfur. I couldn't breathe in there. And I said, why do they hate me so? 
And the answer was, because you're made in the image of God. Yeah. Yes. He did the thing about it. You don't want your loved one to go to hell. No, no, sir. Hell is real, yes. and hell is forever. Yes. And because it's real and forever, there is no rid of habeas corpus to get you out of hell. You gonna yes. stay if you got that? Yes. You gonna stay yes. there. Yeah. Yeah. God wants you to have an urgency, and the devil has diluted, diminished, and otherwise uh, dem diminished the value and urgency of our witness. But you ought to know more than, than a few scriptures that the pastor is. You ought to know why those Ten Commandments are found. You ought to know indeed that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You've got to be able to present that. I tell my young people and young adults in church, how, what if you were standing between someone who was about to die, and you were the only Bible that stood between them and eternity? Yes. They didn't know Christ too mean to accept him in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. But like the thief on the cross, they were in the last minute of their life. Mm -hmm. And they say, and they, and they have a vision that they're going to hell. And say, I don't want to go there. Right. John Hagee tells of a man who was, who was on the operating room, and he kept telling him that we had kept telling the doctor, keep me out of that place. Because he was slipping and he was going down. Mm -hmm. All right. And so the whole idea was, you, if you were standing there, you would be the only difference between them in heaven and them in heaven. Mm. Would you know how to save them? Mm. Would you know how to present Christ to them? That's the message and ministry of Christian yes, education. It is. That you know, that you know, yes, it is. and that you present them to Christ, and then you lead them in a prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to come into their life. Mm -hmm. You can't just say, go to church. He said, look, I ain't got much time here. Yes. I ain't got but a few hours. You tell me to go to church. I can't go to church. I didn't do that when I was around. Well, I drank, smoked, and went to the clubs. Now he's laying up in the bed, and you're the only one. What are you telling me? We all have, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Is that right? For God committed his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Is that right? Yes. And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life uh, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now you got to vote. When you were born, the devil voted for your soul. When you were born, Christ had already died for your soul. It's a tie vote. You've got to do something. If you do nothing, you go to hell. you got to break the tie. Now what do you want to do? You've got to accept the Lord. But if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that the Lord Jesus is Christ and God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. You shall be saved. you got to bring the Bible alive to the person on that day. you got to be the difference, and the devil don't want you to be the difference. So he'll mess up your mind. I don't remember what it is. That's why you got to go over it. That's why you got to know what those Ten Commandments are. That's why you got to know the Romans' road to salvation or some scriptures that you know. John 3.16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Let me tell you this. Have you ever thought of what everlasting life is like? <laughs> have you thought of what eternity looks like? I do this little experiment, a little uh, exercise, when I just want to explain at a funeral or anywhere else what eternity and life is like. You read in the book of Psalms, that our days, the days of man, three score a year and ten, uh -huh. and then by some reason of strength, yes. they be four score, yet as they strength, labor, and sorrow, uh -huh. and we fly away. If you could uh, put 80 years on a timeline, it would look like a dot on this page. Mm -hmm. That's what your life would look like. My mama said, enjoy your life, because it goes by quickly. Uh -huh. She was right. Uh, I'm getting older now. I just can kick up a leg or two. <laughs> Got to count the steps now. <laughs> Life is fast and fleeting. Yes. Yes. And it's called time. And time is remarkably yeah. fast. Yes. So if your life was a dot, and then eternity was eternity, you could put this on a wall. All the space on that yellow is eternity. All the space on this wall is eternity. All the space on all the walls in this room would look like eternity. Eternity is forever. What God has done is taken time and made it a parenthetical. And he made time for man. 
And when God is ready to come back, he's going to pull up the curtain of time and step through from yeah. eternity yeah. and say time is no more. No no. more. You've got to live so God can use every day of your life. Yes. You have no business being too lethargic. You have no business being, if you will, uh, couch potatoes. Yeah. It's getting kind of quiet on me now. Right. You're right. You're right. But you have to get up. And you have to think about ways and creatively that you can minister to people. Calling them on the phone. I thought of one way when because uh, I had a member who was in, uh, in uh, North Texas and she was in surgery and had come out of surgery and, uh, and her daughter was saying, oh, she just mom just came out of surgery in Vincent. And uh, we were sitting at home here in San Antonio and I said, you know what? Let's do something for her. And I said, let's get up right now and take our cell phone and pray and have one of the members of the family just picture us praying and saying hello and give her a prayer in real time and then text that to her as an attachment. All right. Do you know that blessed her life so much? Oh, yeah. We took that and we just all said, hi, hi, we're praying for you. And we just bowed down and prayed. You can use your phone for more than... Yes, yes, and those are creative yes, ways uh, you can bless somebody yeah. to see you praying and see their pastor and wife and family praying and they're praying for you. How much does that mean when you're on your sick bed? Yeah. That'll make you get well. Yeah. They've already done study after study that those who believe in faith and have faith and feel the anointing of God get well quickly. Yeah. They don't deteriorate. They don't go down. They say, I'm holding, I'm yet holding on. That's what God appears to say, are you yet holding on? I'm yet holding on. So that is what we have to get, the excitement. And we have to get the, the drama of this thing back. Because we have become too lethargic in our witness. Too lethargic about the product. And Christian education is about studying the word knowing the word. Now you don't have to be experts because what we're going to look at is how God took people to different men and he didn't make them experts, he just made them, they were people. You don't have to be a theologian, nobody is going to test you on being a theologian. All your grandma will say, I just knew the law will make a way somehow. And that was enough. That was the faith enough. So we're going to be studying again how the Lord called Abraham from Ur of the Chaldeans. And his family was a heathen family. Mm -hmm. Haran and his father all worshiped idol gods. Mm -hmm. But God called him yes. to make of him a great nation. Yes. And then God put all these elaborate things that you had rituals and things they had to do and sacrifices in order to make atonement for their sin. What was God doing? He was educating. Mm -hmm. All these rituals was for the purpose of education. Mm -hmm. And then when you get to the book of Deuteronomy, he says, tell your children. Yeah. And in the morning, yeah. speak of me. Yeah. You know what's going to convince somebody? It's your, your authority telling a wayward child who's on drugs, a wayward person who's been in and out of jail, you need to know the Lord. Yeah. You need to know the Lord. Yeah. And you need to know it right now. I recall a funeral I did, was it this year? Last year. A young man passed away. He was shot by the policeman, one of these things that you try to tell young people to do, not to do. Not to do. Don't, in other words, run from a policeman. No, no, no. He was, it was a very, um, I guess, a public case. And we had, he was one of my members. He got shot at Chachos on Perry yes. Bike. And he was a good young man. Mar Marquise was a good young man. He grew up in the church, and he strayed away. We got grown. And he came back. I said, Marquise, is that your boy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Reverend And I said, I am so glad to see you come back to the church. Came back before he died. Yeah. And when they called me to say Marquise got killed, I was so heartbroken. I know that. I said, Reverend Benson, Reverend Marquise got shot. I said, what? Mm -hmm. And they told me, I, I went over to ask how it happened and investigated my, myself. I said, Reverend Benson, we were Chachos. Marquise was on the passenger side. Mm -hmm. And the driver, his buddy, bumped into the car in front of him where they had a lady in it. The off-duty policeman came over, and then the altercation started. He called other backup policemen, and then Marquise was sitting in the car. We told him, Marquise, stay in the car. He said, no, I believe I can run home. 
He said, I didn't want no, no, no tacos anyway. I wanted some cereal. I, I believe I can run home. Marquis, stay in the car. He said, and you just been to your parole hearing today. You have no reason to get out. And you can just stay in the car. Marquis could not sit still. That's another thing about sheep. Sheep yeah. are restless. Yeah. If they don't hear the voice of the shepherd, they get restless. Yeah. There's a whole lot of dumb things we've done yeah. that we won't admit right now because we dressed up in church. Yeah. But we've done Come some on, simple Say that. Just like Marquis. Yeah. Only Marquis that day would meet a tragedy. Yeah. So Marquis, they said, got out of the car. Remember, he closed the door with both hands. He didn't have no gun in his hand. And he took off running. And he was running. They said, I don't know what they said, hold it up. He said, but they shot him down like a dog. Right? Oh, so, bullet hit him, and he fell. Right? So the first one, he kept running, and then he fell into, and my brother died. That's what his yeah. sister told him. Yeah. It was so sad. Marquise didn't have to die. Yeah. But what was the short and long and short of it? Yeah. We had his funeral. It was so many gang members. Yeah. Uh -huh. We couldn't fill them up in Bethany. Yeah. So we brought them here to Second Baptist. Yeah. This is a real story. And all of them came to Second Baptist. They wore their colors. Uh -huh. They had their grid in their mouth. And they were they had to pay their respects. Had their hat on in church. Mm -hmm. I said, don't bother them with their hat on. Because I already bothered them. Yeah. Baptist preacher. Yeah. And so I had a message to them saying I was ready to preach. Uh -huh. To tell them, see what happens when you don't get right with God. And the Lord sold me this. I'm telling you this. This is yes. Christian education. This is the right spirit. Yes. The Lord said, don't you ball my people out. Yes. I said, but Lord, you know how we are. This is my opportunity. Come, come. <laughs> he said, don't ball my people out. Don't ball them out. Tell them, if they're drinking beer, I'm not worried about that. If they're doing whatever they're doing, I want them to know me as their Savior. Yes. That was the message that night. That was a message, and what happened in that congregation, in that sanctuary, I'll never shall forget. The Lord gave me the cross. We held that cross up, and I said, now, we need to know how many people are on the Lord's side. We need to know how many want to see Marquise again, how many will accept Christ as their Savior. I'm going to walk down that aisle with this cross, and everybody who wants to, you better get up and follow after this cross. Yes. I was expecting two or three Maybe five or ten in his family. Can I tell you, practically the whole time, when I got through walking down, I couldn't get back to Amazine to the middle aisle the second time. I had to cut through the, the pew to get back to the pulpit. We had over a hundred people say we accept Christ. Praise God. Praise God. That's the kind of education it's going to take. Hearing the voice of God. Following the word of God yes. and letting that word do what no other word can do. Can do. Oh. That's right. The word of God, quick and powerful, it is. sharper it than a two-edged sword, is, is. is a, a, a capable of separating the joint from the marrow and is a discerner is. of the thoughts That's the word. Yeah. and intents. That's, that is the word. Uh -huh. Amen. We do not know what that word can do. When God yeah. spoke the world into his existence and say, let there be light. Those words raced across the night sky at speeds higher than 186,000 miles a second, which is the speed of light. It outran the speed of light and knocked on darkness and beat up darkness to light yes, broke forth. Yes, and light said, here we are, God. Yes, the power of yes, hearing the word of God is immeasurable. Mm -hmm. We're going to see a little experiment as we close because words are powerful. Mm -hmm. And words are more powerful than you realize because what keeps you up at night is what somebody said to you. Yes. What keeps what wakes you up in the morning is what you should have said to them. Yeah. 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 We're gonna see an experiment that I, I didn't even know existed until I got to researching because I have such an inquisitive mind. I wanted to see what what the word of God could, it was like. And I ran across a uh, a scientist by the name of Dr. Masaru Emoto. He's Japanese, but he's a brother. He's a brother in faith. And he did an experiment with rice that you ought to know about. He said, what is that? Rice and water. He said, I don't know what other rice and water. Except rice and water have 
a really tremendous time together yes. when he put three flasks on a, on a table, poured water over the cooked <coughs> rice, and then did an experiment. He spoke good words to one flask. He spoke no words to the other flask. And he spoke negative words to the third one. In a month's time, the first flask, the rice was still white, fermenting, giving a sweet aroma. In the second one, it began to rot. And in the third one, the rice was black. What are you saying, Reverend Vincent? That water has properties we don't know about. And that since words and water can make a difference on rice, wonder how words and water can make a difference on us. Yeah. The earth is 75% water. The human body is 75% water. You stop drinking water and see how it's you dry up. Huh? Not to tell you now, drink more water. You say, I don't want to. Drink some water. It's good for your brain, too. Amen? Because it helps the synapses jump in those little nerve endings, huh? Drink your water in the morning, eat you an ounce of uh, nuts, you know, peanuts, walnuts, anything. It'll help your brain activity. I'm trying to help somebody. No commercial, I'm not Thank selling shop. Thank you. I'm just telling you what I read. But when he got through with the experiment, he learned something. That how you talk to people leaves an indelible impression because we are 75% water. Yeah. He showed then the next experiment with water crystals. We don't have time to show that, but we're going to show the next the three flasks. The water crystals was speaking to water and then freezing the water and seeing what kind of crystals were formed. Mm -hmm. So he took, if you will, he'd speak to the water good things, God or goodness. He'd speak to something else, Hitler, or he'd say something sinful mm -hmm. and or cancer. And water responded. Now, water is the only thing that's a solid, liquid, and a gas. Yeah. Right. And without water, no planet can exist that we know about. So water is the life-giving thing. Sheep need water. Yeah. And Jesus met the lady at the well and said, if you drink that water, yeah. you thirst again. But if you drink my water, you'll never thirst again. Right. The Word is our water. Amen. The Word is our life. Yeah. And when we speak the words of the Bible, yeah. it is more than our words alone. Yeah. It shouldn't be our opinion, yeah. but it should be the word of God. Yeah. So when these, these particular crystals were made, he, 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 he played Martin Luther King's speech, I have a dream. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, pristine crystals with geometrical patterns. Then he paid amazing grace, and the water as if it hurt, and he freezes, and then he put it on a microphone and saw those beautiful crystals. Mm -hmm. What you say to people, impact. What you say to children, they'll remember the yes, rest of the life. We're going to roll the film and show you exactly what we were talking about. And then tomorrow we're going to get down to going to the Red Sea as a case study and watching the Word of God unfold. We're going to go to a cul-de-sac. How many can say cul-de-sac? Cul-de-sac. Cul-de-sac cul has Fahatharol, Migdal, and Vail Savon. Of three, if you call three houses, three particular places. We're going to learn those names meant something, and you're going to learn how God shows up and shows out. and God is in His Word. Take His Word seriously. If you don't take anything else from His Word, His Word is more than your grandma over the switch. Amen. She means what she says, and God means what He says. All right, go ahead, Brother Marcy. Oops, I did the wrong thing here. Yeah, Break it up from the top.
place that was ignored began to rot. Dr. Emoto thinks that this experiment provides an important lesson, especially with regard to how we treat children. We should take care of them, give them attention, and converse with them. Indifference does the greatest harm. Uh, uh, during this study, combat almost. All right, that was just a little of what you show. Now what this did when I showed this to my congregation, it revolutionized our I'll leave it to him. It revolutionized how we bless our food. If water is responding with negative crystals, when you're talking about somebody running them down. Yeah, yeah. And then you're blessing God, water will respond with positive things. Yeah. Not only do you need to bless your food, bless your water. Yeah. Amen. Huh, you've been praying over that food, all that, huh? <laughs> Cholesterol, <laughs> filling, stuff, huh? Yeah. Said, bless this, God, bless your bacon, sausage, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and you haven't prayed over the water? <laughs> and the water has properties in it you need to know. Uh, one of the things we're going to talk about later is the fact that they can take the water in one uh, picture, pour it into another, and then take it miles apart and introduce something into one picture, and in effect, the other picture miles apart will reflect it. That shows communication, that shows timing, that shows a lot of things. It shows how we can communicate. We cannot travel as fast as the speed of light, but we have a consciousness when we pray to God that God can hear you before you finish your prayer. And while it is yet in your mouth, God can answer that prayer. You need to know that. These things show you that, and it gets you excited about the God we serve. He's an able God, able to do great things. Well, I guess that's all my time. It's been a complete pleasure as well as a privilege. But come back tomorrow night, you're going to get more. God bless you. Amen. 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 Amen.